sports fans and baseball fans. Today, I'm going to do a tutorial on playing Back to Basics Baseball. And as you can see, I've got my field laid out. Now, the field that you see right there was actually generated by me. Um, I did it on my printer. Um, it doesn't come with a baseball field. But, as you know, if you've watched any of my replays, you know that I like to have, um, I like to have a field with markers marking where the base runners are in some form or another. Uh, so, that's what we, uh, that's what we did. Um, I, I generated this field. So, it does not come with the field. It comes with instructions. It comes with a deck of uh, fast action cards or, you know, play moving cards or whatever you want to call them. And it comes with a couple of score sheets, which I have um, made copies of. However, I cut it off at the top, so I have to remedy that. And the instructions give you a list of, um, well, not a list, but they give you a PDF of all of the uh, teams from every season that it makes and it makes most every season so um, in fact if they don't have whatever season they may not have it's more recent seasons like maybe maybe they don't have 2020 I'm not sure um, or you know or, or 2021 but they have like all the way back to 1871 so um, but there are no cards with the game except for the uh, split deck that you use but it is a simple game to play now if you don't make your own cards which I have done and so we will show you that here in a minute because um, we've got the 1960 Dodgers right here that I have made and we have the 1979 Phillies and I have done a game between these two you might want to go check that out I'll put it in the um, you know, on the uh, end screen so that you can click on it once this video is over and go to that if you haven't seen it. Very good game between these two teams. But uh, if you don't want to make your own cards, and many won't want to do that, you can actually um, use the, uh, you know, what's on the, um, what's on the website, what the, uh, the PDFs. And you can print the PDFs off or you can keep them, I suppose you could keep them on your phone while you play the game or uh, whatever you want to do. So, uh, but here's the discussion and look at those PDFs. All right, so here we are looking at the uh, PDFs, what the PDFs for the game look like. This is the 1960 Dodgers, which you will see in a minute in um, card form, cards that I made because the game, again, the game does not have cards they do not include cards with the game which also is probably why they can sell the game for 17 to 20 dollars you can get the game with all seasons everything 17 to 20 bucks um my recollection is 17 but i've seen other lower low numbers like 18 19 but uh it's very inexpensive to buy mainly because they don't make the cards for all the seasons, but they do have all the seasons. And you can see right here, uh, the pitchers for the 1960 Dodgers. And these are, you know, the age, uh, the, the pitch rating, the walk rating, the strikeout rating, the endurance rating, they have all the ratings right here. And if you play without making your own cards, what you would do is you would write, write these ratings into your score sheet, which we will show you later when we show you the score sheets. So here are the Dodgers pitchers, and here are the Dodgers hitters, and their ranges for the positions that they play, and their error rating for the position uh, that they play. So uh, this is, uh, and again, all this information along the top, bat, walk, strikeout rating, second base rating. You would write all of these in on the score sheet prior to playing your game, and then you would have all of this information. Now, you would probably want to print it out as well, because if you have any substitutions, you don't want to write all the substitution, all the possible substitutions on the sheet, 
you would want to have the um, you would want to have it handy so that you knew who you were going to put in, and then you just write in the new player and all of their uh, ratings, and uh, you know, and then uh, so forth and so on. And they also have the batters rated for their hitting, like Roger Craig right here. Uh, Sandy Koufax. So the pitchers are even rated for their hitting um, abilities. Um, when I make the cards, I write the pitcher's hitting on the back of their pitching card. And then um, what I do is I just put in like a pitcher marker card that says the pitcher's up now. And then when that comes up, I know to flip the card over and look at the batter rating on the card. But um, th those are the kinds of things you would do if you made cards, if you use the PDFs, here they are, they have every year. Um, so, I mean, you can see right here, you look back, I've got all of the seasons right here and they go up to 2014. So, um, you know, I don't know what the, what the deal is with the more recent ones, um, but they have everything from 2014 all the way back in time to 1871. So that's my discussion on the um, the the PDFs that come uh, that you can get uh, as part of the game when you order the game. Okay, so uh, so that, those were the PDFs of the uh, cards that you can get with the set um, with the you know with the game, and you can play any year from the past, any, you know, whatever you want to do. But I make my cards um, um, and when I can. Sometimes I'm, I'm probably going to play games on the channel that don't use cards because I don't have the time to make the cards. But let's um, go through a playthrough, uh, a, a, like a quick, you know, start to play it through just to show you how the game is played. All right, so now you've got the cards uh, laid out here. You can see there's a Sandy Koufax pitching card and the Phillies uh, hitting cards. Uh, and we will, we will uh, start out um, assuming that the Phillies are batting against Sandy Koufax. Um, and these ratings that you see, everything written on this card is right from the PDF of the actual teams. Um, in the cards that I made. It's just easier, again, for me to use the cards. So uh, what we would do, the very first thing you do is you go to the deck of cards. So here's the deck. And uh, this is what your deck looks like. And the first thing that we re that we consider, well, you would flip, I think, I guess you would flip a card to get to the next, the um, next card. And as you can see right here, up and you look in the red first on the pitcher. Um, and Sandy Koufax is uh, a pitcher C in 1960. So this says ground out to the shortstop. So immediately we know that Gary Maddox batting against Sandy Koufax just grounded out to the shortstop. And that's it. It's that simple for that in that case. Now you got Pete Rose. He's an A-plus batter, and he's going up against a C pitcher, and so we flip another card. And again, you refer to the red, the pitcher um, rating up at the top, and he's still a C, and that's a line out to third base. So uh, Pete Rose has lined out, and so now you go to the next Phillies batter. And that is Mike Schmidt. So you got Mike Schmidt. He's a batter C. And uh, we flip the card again. <clears throat> and uh, under C uh, pitcher, you can see that there was a pop out to third base. So this was a really good example of how quick and easy an inning can be. But let's go down and look at what other possibilities there are. So let's look at this card. Let's say you flip this card. And under the C pitcher, you can see it says swing. So that's where you refer to the green part in the bottom and the batter. And uh, let's say that uh, we just got done with, um, with Schmidt and he was a batter C. And you can see for a batter C, the reading says strikeout B, C, D, or F. 
Um, and he is a strikeout F, so he would have struck out. However, if he had been an A or an A plus batter, you would have referred to the uh, out section of the card. Um, and let me see where the out section is. Um, hmm. Oh, right. So you can see up at the top, it says out shortstop. So if he doesn't strike out, if he were an A batter and he didn't strike out, he would have grounded out to the shortstop. So now uh, let's assume that um, you wanted to, that there was uh, an error rating or a range rating. And you get those, as you can see here, um, on the uh, batter's cards, they have, um, well, actually, that's a bad example, because it doesn't show it. Um, let's see, okay. So here we've got, you can see on the batter's card for a B-plus batter, it says ground out to first base, and then there's a pound sign after it. If there's a pound sign after it, that means that there is um, either a range or error check. I forget which. I think it's a range check. And then if you can see on this card, if you've got an F batter, he grounds out to first base and there is a, uh, a percentage sign after it. That means uh, it's an, either an error or range check. I think range check is the... Um, uh, is the pound sign and uh, and an air check is the uh, percentage sign and so then you referred to either the error or range you can see there's an error or range section now regardless of who the ball was hit to in the case of this card if if this were the next card you would pick the next card if this were the next card you picked you would see that they any player that it was hit at um, would have made an out. So um, regardless of how it was hit, it would have been an out. So uh, that is, I mean, you know, that's that's basically how it goes. You've got, now there are um, instances where you will have, let's see, here's a good example. You've got a card that says walk, A, B, or C. So if the batter on his card, and you will see, you can refer to, like, here's Mike Schmidt, and his walk rating is A. So, in the case of this card, if this had been Mike Schmidt, um, he, he would have, if that rating had come up for him, although he's a C batter, not a D, uh, he would have walked. But, um, if it's not A, B, or C, and he doesn't walk, then you refer to the out section of the card. And you can see on this card, he would have grounded out to the shortstop. So um, that is, it, and that's, that's basically how it works. And you will see things also um, like a, uh, Like, like, for instance, here, this card for the batter, it says home run A or a deep fly ball to right field. So what that means is if the batter is a home run A, and again, they're rated right here for everything, and Mike Schmidt is an A. So on this card, if, this, you, if you had drawn this card for Mike Schmidt, he would have hit a home run. But most batters would have had a deep fly. Sometimes it'll just say something like, double and then nothing after it but it'll say but, but it'll say double b c or d for instance and then you would refer to the batter's double rating and again um they are rated for a double mike schmidt is a d on doubles if you don't if you don't draw the um if the batter is not what the rating says in parentheses after the double then it's really a single with runners advancing two bases so that is basically how the game works. I mean, it's very simple. It's very quick to play. Um, you know, here we go. We've got C strikeout A or B. And uh, Sandy Koufax is not a strike. He's not a strikeout 
Oh, yeah, he is. He is a strikeout A. So in this particular case, he would have struck out a batter. But if it didn't fall in his range, if he wasn't an A or a B, then you would have gone, you would have flipped another card and gone to the swing section for the, uh, for the batter. I believe. I believe that's what would have happened. It's possible that you referred to the out, but you you know you could look at the uh, you could look at the directions and correct me if I'm wrong. And if anybody knows the game that well, let me know if the strikeout just becomes an out um, on the out reading card, or whether you flip the next card to see what the batter would do. Uh, but I think, and really in that case, I don't think either way you could go wrong with it. So now let's talk about the score sheets because the score sheets, if you do not have cards, as I do in some cases, but won't in every case, you have the score sheets. And as you can see on the score sheets, you, you, there is a place for you to write down all of the batter's ratings and you can also write all of the pitcher's ratings so that you can keep these on the score sheet and um, and you can also print off the PDF of the um, uh, of the year that you're playing and the teams that you're playing, and refer to it that way as well. But it's it's handy if you just write them in here and then you have them all on the score sheet. Of course, either way, it takes a lot of setup. You have to write out the score sheets, write out the lineups, put up all you know, put in all of the ratings of all of the players and um and then and then play the game or you have to make your own cards as i did with the 79 phillies and the 60 dodgers and then play them against each other and one thing i like about making cards as opposed to doing it this way writing it on the score sheet is that you um you can, you can put them in the lineup and you can move the cards, you know, one card, move it down to the bottom of the deck, move the next guy down to the bottom of the deck. And, um, you know, and it just gives you something to hold on to, something in your hand, you've got the cards. I just like doing it that way, but of course that isn't always possible. So, um, you know, there will be times when I will do it that way and I will not use the, uh, you know, I, I, I won't use cards because I'll have to use them on the score sheets. So that is a quick, just a quick look and tutorial at Back to Basics Baseball. It's a very easy game to play. It's a quick game to play. I like it a lot. The only question would be how accurate it is. And I think you would have to play out an entire season to really know how accurate it actually is. But from what I've seen, I really like it, and there will be more. You can look forward to more Back to Basics Baseball on my channel. But that is going to be it for right now for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.